place was absolutely decimated, man. It was like a homecoming bonfire. The buildings, the people. I mean, you see stuff like this a lot in Vietnam, but there was just one thing about that village. There was this girl, right? About 14 years old, and everything's burning down around her, and she's just there in the middle of the village, dancing. I kid you not. House is on fire, her parents are dead inside, and she's just dancing her ass off in the middle of the square. How do you explain something like that, you know? I mean, is Charlie Kong giving ballet lessons now? Thank you for joining us tonight on World at War. That was Thomas Azar, a member of the Alpha Company. This is your host, Samantha Addis. Tonight we will be reliving a snapshot of the Vietnam War with some of the very people who experienced it firsthand. We will also be joined by a very special guest host, author of the best-selling novel, The Things They Carried, and veteran of the Vietnam War, Tim O'Brien. Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Samantha. It's a pleasure to be here today. Also joining us today is Thomas Azar, a prominent figure in O'Brien's book. Evening. Good to be here. So, Tim, why did you choose to include the chapter, Style, in the novel? When you're in war... The hardest thing a soldier has to go through is dealing with grief. Everybody does it in different ways, you know? The longer you're in the middle of war, the more you start to notice the civilians are there with you. It's not just a piece of land, it's it's people, families, lives. They deserve to have their stories told too. In the book, one of the standout characters is definitely Azar. Thomas, can you talk to us about why you reacted the way you did? During the war, it was easier for me to make things into a game because it took power away from things that were really bad. You could get away with a lot of crazy stuff by saying, well, you know, I'm just a kid. That's what you have to remember. We were just kids. We weren't able to understand what was happening, so we made fun of it because you see some really awful stuff when you're at war. Another character, Henry Dobbins, reacted very differently. Now, why do you think that is? I don't know. Everybody handled that war differently. Maybe Dobbins saw something in it that I didn't. I think Dobbins saw the humanity of it all better than any of us did. He saw something different in the girl, the villagers, even the land than we did. He had a grasp of the war, you know, the people, or a connection to everyone. In some ways, he was the most distant, but also the most connected. He was willing to try to understand the girl, although he didn't even fully comprehend. What did the girl signify to you? She put a face to the destruction. She lost her entire family. She wasn't just a statistic anymore. And it also showed us that we weren't the only ones there, the only ones having to deal with it. We had all been so consumed with how the war affected us, and the grief affected us. And we never really thought about how it was more universal than that. It, it made us realize it wasn't just us anymore. Actually, we managed to track down the girl you saw in the village. What? And one of our reporters got to interview her. No way, man. Did you find out why she was dancing? I was dancing because I was afraid. I didn't know what to do, so I pretended nothing was there instead. After the Viet Cong came in and started burning everything, it was almost like everything stopped. My family was dead and my village was gone. I didn't know what else to do. It was just easier to dance. Wow, I mean, what a letdown, man. I've been waiting for something profound and this is what I get? Well, that's Vietnam, I guess. Not a damn thing makes sense. Couldn't it just be her own way of dealing with what was going on? You know, her way to cope? Well, dancey is fancy, but liquor is quicker. That's the one way of dealing with it. Really, though, that's why I wrote the chapter. Grief is a universal feeling in life, but especially in war. I really wrote this chapter to show all of the ways of dealing with grief and how they're all valid. It's really important to understand where other people are coming from and dealing with what they have to go through in war. I think that Henry Dobbins really exemplifies this quality. He was our consciousness, our bridge into understanding what was going on. He saw the war and the world from a different perspective. The girl danced mostly on her toes. She took tiny steps in the dirt in front of her house, sometimes making a slow twirl, sometimes smiling to herself. 
Why is she dancing, Azar said. And Henry Dobbins said it didn't matter why. She just was. Later we found her family in the house. They were dead and badly burned. It wasn't a big family. An infant, an old woman, and a woman whose age was hard to tell. When we dragged them out, the girl kept dancing. She put the palms of her hands against her ears, which must have meant something. And she danced sideways for a short while, and then backwards. She did a graceful movement with her hips. Well, I don't get it, Azar said. The smoke from the hooches smelled like straw. It moved in patches across the village square, not thick anymore, sometimes just faint ripples like fog. There were dead pigs, too. The girl went up on her toes and made a slow turn and danced through the smoke. Her face had a dreamy look, quiet and composed. A while later, when we moved out of the hamlet, she was still dancing. Probably some weird ritual, Azar said. But Henry Dobbins looked back and said no. The girl just liked to dance. Yeah. That was really Dobbins. He tried to make everyone see everything else for what it was. It was almost like he was our own personal grief counselor. And that's what this all comes down to. Grief. We all had our own ways of dealing with it, either talking about it or not. We all had our own style. That's why I named the chapter style. It better be a style you like, too, because the grief doesn't go away after you come home. That stuff stays with you forever. Thank you again for joining us for World at War. Our production manager and editor is Taylor Lipinski. Special guests on tonight's show were Sheen McFadden and Maya Council. Quotes are courtesy of The Things They Carried, a novel by Tim O'Brien. Sounds courtesy of Royalty Free Sound Effects by Soundgul and music by Longsigen. This is your host, Samantha Addis. Until next week, good night. Mm-hmm.